Hello everybody and welcome to this, my first of two videos on the Canon EOS Elan 2E, also called the 50E and the 55E. This is an, a 35 millimeter interchangeable lens SLR. Now what that means is that the lens can be taken off and put back on at any time. That's interchangeable lens. As long as you're not taking a photo, it won't affect your film at all. It can use any 35 millimeter film and it is a single lens reflex. So one lens, the light enters here, hits the reflex mirror and goes to the prism and to your viewfinder. And you can see what, the scene, what is going to be recorded on the film up, right up until you take the actual picture. It, is, it has multiple meter modes for scene, center weighted and spot metering. We'll cover that in detail in video two. It has shutter speeds of, oh, I did not write that down has shutter speeds of 1 4,000th to guessing 30 seconds to 30 seconds and bulb. It has a 0.71x viewfinder magnification with 90% frame coverage vertical and 92% horizontal. Now what that means is what you're going to see here in the viewfinder is 71% of the size of what's going to be recorded on the film. What the Frame coverage means is let's imagine that what you're looking at right now in this video is what's going to be on the film. For, vertic for horizontal frame coverage, you have 90% coverage, which means about 4% on each side is going to be lost. For vertical, you have 90% frame coverage, which, which means about 5% is going to be lost. You won't see it in the viewfinder, but it will appear on the film. It has a fixed focusing screen that shows the AF point, the autofocus point, and the flash sync speed on this camera is 1 1 of a second. This camera was intended for the advanced amateur market. It has features galore, and features, especially with Canon cameras, are the hallmark of advanced amateur cameras. Basically, when uh, Canon goes to market cameras to advanced amateur users, their selling point is look at all of the stuff you can do. And uh, they just cram these cameras with different things. It's built generally well, but it does have a slightly plasticky feel to it. It feels solid, but the external just feels, you know, it is still a well-made camera by all means. It lacks some of the features important to high-end users like a flash PC port as well. So that's how you know it's not intended for a professional audience. It was built by Canon in Japan from 1995 until approximately 2000. I couldn't find exactly when it went out of production. It was preceded by the EOS 100, concurrent with the EOS 1N, 1N RS, 5, 500N, the G, and the 5000. And it was followed by the EOS 30. So now as we do, let's go over the camera's features and we will start here on the top. Technically, one of them is on the side with the strap lugs. And this is where you would connect your straps to the camera. Here are your metering modes and the metering mode switches right here. Self timer button. This is your mode dial. So you can select your different shooting modes. This is your mode dial. Oh, uh, the silver button right here is your mode dial lock release. So in lock, you can't turn the mode dial unless you push that silver button in. And you can see the switch here for metering modes has two switches. So you, there are multiple ways to grab it. Flash hot shoe, flash release button right here for the pop-up flash. This is your autofocus selector. This is your drive mode selector right here. So between single shot and continuous, LCD information screen, top command wheel, shutter release button. On the camera's front, we have the autofocus assist light, lens mount, lens mount index, shutter release button, manufacturer model and quartz date uh, indicator. On the camera's back, we have the, front, the, the film window, so when you have film loaded, you read this little bit of text right here, or you can just verify by looking at it that you have film loaded into the camera. Film rewind button right here. This is your uh, 
mode selector button, which allows you to select between your film speed, auto exposure bracketing, flash mode, exposure compensation, double exposures, and your beep. We'll see how to use that in the second video. This is the quartz state function, which we're not going to go over because the, um, the battery, the previous owner allowed the battery for that to explode in here, and the quartz state function doesn't work on this camera anymore. This is the power button for your um, on off for, the, uh, for this command dial, rather. This is the command dial control button, viewfinder window, asterisk, and custom function button. And this is your autofocus selector point button. On the camera's bottom, we have the film of the battery chamber right here, rather. Canon, made in Japan, serial number. On the inside of the camera, which we access by pushing down on this release right here on the side, we have the film cassette chamber. These, this is the internal area with the film guide rails, which you can see are cast into the plastic of the housing here. Shutter. Film guide roller to help it move smoothly through the camera, help the film move smoothly through the camera. Film take up spool. Leader index. This is where you pull the leader out to when you load it, and we'll see that in the second video. Tension, film tensioner so that it's, the film has tension here and can move, be taken up by the camera smoothly. Film pressure plate. Film cassette spring. And this is a light seal around the window so that the light coming into the window doesn't ruin your film when it's in the camera. Some notes on your Canon EOS Elan 2E. This was the most successful EOS advanced amateur film camera in that it was produced for five years, which is longer than any of the other advanced amateur EOS bodies were produced. The E in the title here indicates that it has eye tracking autofocus like the EOS 3 does. So the autofocus it selects, the autofocus point that it selects, is the one in which the photographer looks at when they're looking through the viewfinder. Also, iFocus only works in basic shooting modes, which are uh, program, shutter priority, aperture priority, manual, and auto exposure depth of field. And we'll see all about these shooting modes in the second video. Some things not to do with your Canon EOS Elan 2. Don't let the Cam don't touch the shutter or the mirror in the camera if you can avoid it. The finger, your finger oils can desilver the mirror, which will throw off your autofocus and your metering and make it harder to read the scene through your viewfinder. They can also mess up your shutter, just the oils on your, your fingers can. Also, touching the shutter leaves on this camera is a really good way to brick your shutter and ruin your camera entirely. Don't leave your camera or lenses in your car because heat can warp the plastic components in this camera. It can also cause lubricating oils to get to places they shouldn't, and um, when they get back to their proper viscosity, really muck up the works. Also, cold can cause the plastic to shrink and crack, and it can also cause lubricating oils to get into the wrong, uh, to, to break down and become really gummy. And also, frankly, leaving your camera in your car, even for a few minutes, is a good way to come back to no window and no camera. So even if you're just hopping into a store really quickly, just for a few minutes even, just take your camera with you. It's cheaper than replacing a camera in a window. Don't store your gear in a plastic bag or box because fungus can grow on the lens optics. Don't let this camera get wet because if water gets into the um, electronics, it will short it out and ruin your camera. And just remember that your Canon EOS Elan 2E is a precision instrument and should be handled with care and respect. And as long as you take care of your camera, your camera will take care of you. All right, so that was it for the first video where we looked at what everything is. If you need to know how to use everything on this camera, stick around for video two and we'll go over everything in detail. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.